Okay, so hello and welcome to live stream. How many people have we got here? We've got we've got like six people. I don't know if that's actually true, but YouTube's not always very accurate with displaying how many are watching a stream. But anyway, uh, so this live stream, uh, I know I mentioned it in the announcements channel, if you've seen this from the announcement channel or the Discord server, but this is going to be from scratch to completion. Um, oh, once I've got, is there a time limit? Um, I'm most likely going to go until it's done, but that really depends how long it takes. I mean, I want to have food at like five or six in my time, so I've got about three hours plus to do it. So we'll see where it is after three hours, and if it's like nowhere near completion, then you know I'll just continue it some other time. But we'll just see how it goes. Well, this isn't going to be like literally, you know, a fully working. I could pass it off as a crossy roads. This is going to be a, um, you know, prototype. It works. You can move around. You can die. You can maybe unlock new characters. We'll see how far we get. But I just want to go across the uh, designing. Obviously, it's a game that's already made, so the designing won't be that hard. But you should still design and plan out a little bit what you're going to do before you make it. And this is just showing good practice and everything you do and why you should do it. So anyway, uh, first thing, I'm going to show you Coggle. It's a website for making mind maps. You don't have to use this exact website, but it's the one I use um, for planning stuff out. Now, um, usually if I plan something out and then made it, I get rid of the Coggle thing because you can only have a maximum of three without paying. But anyway... Um, it's a simple mind map thing, and the way we're going to do it is, you know, we'll call this like, um, you know, it's Crossy Road, whatever. Um, add a branch. So, what is Crossy Road? Well, I mean, I'm sure you all know. Um, it's a simple app, and you play as a little animal. Uh, I think it's chicken by default, because it's their, like, kind of poster character. And you swipe in different directions, and that's how you move. There's obstacles in the way, and then there's different kinds of terrain. So there's, like, grass, which has trees and rocks. Nothing can kill you. Then there's uh, roads which have cars, lorries, and there can be train tracks. Um, and then there's water, obviously, if you fall into the water. So there's kind of three different mechanics. One is just uh, getting onto the grass without hitting an object that stops you. Uh, getting onto the road without getting hit by a car. Uh, the train track, you know, don't get hit by a train. And then the the river, cross the river on the moving logs. So we're going to do the water last because that's got a little bit more to it. But we'll, we'll get the road and the um, grass working first. So... It's a game and it's a simple app. A lot of apps you'll see are simple because, you know, mobile limitations. And also, people like to play simple, quick games on their phone. So, um, the game is mainly focused on movement, right? If you think about the game, what is it? It's just it's just a movement game, right? You just, you've just you got four different inputs, swipe up, down, left, right. Now, I'm on the computer and I'm not going to bother doing it on phone, so I'm just going to use WASD as the uh, movement. Uh, so, yeah, we want to be able to move that's that's all the game is and then we'll have some ways to die and so on now i actually downloaded the game again because i haven't played it in a long time just to see exactly how it works in the sense of you know i, I actually found out the grid uh, the movement system's kind of grid based so uh how it works is you have um everything is on like an exact coordinate so everything's on you know x is one or two or three nothing's on like 1.1 1 .1. and when you're moving on a log, you are you could be in between those values. So let's say you're on a log and you're at x 2.2 and you jump off it. You can't go to the grass and then with an x of 2.2. What it does is it finds like the closest grass space free and then jumps that. And if there is none, then you'll just fall into water. It won't let you jump. So we'll need to uh, just make the movement first. That's all we want to do. Make movement work. Then we can care about everything else later because the game is movement, right? you got to think about it in that sense. All people care about in Crossy Roads is, you know, movement. So make it work, make it work well. And then you can start adding in obstacles and, well, I guess obstacles is one of the first things, but you can start adding in other niceness things afterwards. So that's why I said, if we have time, we'll do character unlocking. So the planning, obviously movement, and it's kind of grid based. Um, we don't, um, the thing with it being grid based, that doesn't mean we need to have like an array of storing all the available spaces or anything stupid like that. It's, it's not going to be like that. It just means that when we um add something to it like for example if we add um a tree make sure it's on the exact coordinate or when we move the player make sure it's on the exact coordinate that's our main thing to um think about so like exact um the movement obviously all four directions um we need to be able to when we do the movement uh check if empty before moving um I feel like that's something we should do, though, yeah, I guess we could always, like, do a raycast, so like, simply just check if something's there before we even try and jump, that's, that's a simple way to do it. There's probably other ways of, like, <laughs> actually storing what there is there. Um, well, I don't know why that went that color. Um, 
So what else is there about movement? Well, that's it pretty much, isn't it? It's grid base that, make sure it goes on to there. Um, there's also uh, character rotation, so like rotation to face, um, previous direction of movement. So whenever you swipe up, you'll ro well, whenever you swipe in any direction, you'll rotate to face that direction. So um, that's always the case. I, I mean, I've got my phone next to me, so if I ever forget exactly how something works, I can always just uh, test it out, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, grid-based movement, all four directions, yep, yeah, okay. So that's, that's pretty much the movement. Uh, then we can start having, like, um, there's, um, like, what we would call enemies, uh, enemy objects. They're not really enemies in this game, you know. Running into a car doesn't make the car an enemy, I guess. Um, so we can say, obviously we've got um, cars. Cars are like medium speed and medium size. And then we've got like um, lorries, um, low speed in comparison and then a big size. So we've got cars, lorries, um, there's uh, trains, um, big size, high speed. All right, so trains, lorries, cars. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. As I can think of. Uh, I guess, I know this is not really it, but I'll put uh, water. So these these are all things that, um, nah, I don't like how that's not letting me put it on the other side, like go that way, but whatever. So water, um, you fall, you touch it, you die, basically. Th these are all things that you touch and you die, right? That's, that's the game. So um, you can move, you touch these and you die, and then, um, I don't really think there's anything else uh, to really put on here. I guess we got level generation. Um, so for level generation, it's just um, what is it? There's a uh, there's grass. There's road. I'm not sure, but I think you could argue that train track is kind of like um, a road. We'll add trains later if uh, we get to it, but for now we'll have road, grass, and like the water area. Um, then we also need to remember there's like um, safety measures. So, well not measures, but the safety thing. So for example, uh, lily pads are safe. Um, all grass areas are safe. Th this is where you want to be completely safe, right? You're safe on a lily pad, you're safe on grass. Um, for water, I just gotta mention uh, moving log, and then we got um, li lily pad, which is a um, whoops. I just messed that up. I forgot what the um, is it Alt? Is it Control? Is it Shift? Ah, I forgot the button. Um, there, there is a button. Oh well. Um, so yeah, lily pads. I think that's it. Do we need to anything else? Um, lily pads are safe on the water. Then we got logs that do move. Um, the roads have the vehicles. Okay, I think that's it to be honest. Um, an XP system or points counter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't know. If, I don't think we'll need XP, but yeah, we'll have points. We'll have the um, coins you can pick up. So, um, now let's add one in over here. So we'll say um, progression. Um, what do we have? We have uh, coins, and I guess we'll have score. Uh, we'll have a high score. Well, high score. And then with coins, you can buy new characters. And then with a high score, you can brag. Because I'm not adding a, uh, I'm not adding a like posting thing onto like a social media for, you know, high scores or whatever. So anyway, I think that we could say that's it to be honest. Let me just um, open it up last minute, and then we can start getting into the making of it. To be honest. 
So open the game. Uh, one thing to note is when you open the game, you're actually not on a menu. You're like in the game with an overlaid menu. Um, and as soon as you tap the screen, you start playing. So yeah, you can go through all the people you own, right? There's like a, yeah. And then there's a shop, but we're not adding microtransactions into this. I've not actually ever done microtransactions, so I wouldn't know anyway. Um, okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, well, I guess we could start making it then, to be honest. Let's get into that. Then. So, Unity, let's use, uh, let's make a new project for Crossy Road Stream. Uh, what version? Should we use the beta version? Let's use the new beta version, because I might want to use uh, prefabs, so you never know. Um, yeah, I might use prefabs for cars, actually. The new prefab system would be pretty cool. Let's do that. <coughs> okay, yep, yep, yep. Create. Okay. Um, one thing is, as well, it's a low-poly game, but it's not like the kind of low-poly like in my game. This, this is literally just everything's cubes, basically. So... What we could actually do is we could use this thing. Okay, so obviously I could use Blender for this. The thing about, uh, don't forget to add if you wait too long, you die. Yeah, is that on, that's on, that's only on the water, right? Or is it in general? Oh yeah, the camera's constantly moving, isn't it? Ah yeah, I've just, yeah, you die if you wait too long. Okay, so what we could do for that system is, let me think. So we could do it if you go off the camera. If the camera gets too far away from you. Hmm. Because what happens, let me just quickly see. If you move too fast. Um, so yeah, the camera moves to stay with you. But then when you're not moving, it keeps moving forward anyway. Um... And then you die. Okay. So, what I could just do, I could simply have a um, thing for when you're not moving. There's a timer. And then if you've, like, not moved in a certain amount of time. Like, how about... If it's about to catch up to you, like, if you're about to lose. And you move one. Yeah, I feel like that's how it works. There's just, like, a... Hmm... We'll think about that when we're doing the camera movement. Uh, I'll make sure to add that, but I might not implement it right away. Um, well, uh, enemy object. Um, <laughs> waiting too long. Oh, see, I'm being. I, this isn't strictly like how it works. You know, this is just. These are ways to die, basically. This is movement. Ways to die. Progression, safety, level generation. Okay. Uh, morning far doom. Hello. Um, all right, Unity's open. Great. So, <clears throat> let's start with let's start with player movement. All right. So, rather than having level generation just yet, we'll add. Well, actually, one thing is when we do movement in this, we don't want to have. Um, do we want rigid body um, with gravity? I don't think we do because that could start causing problems with like friction and movement. We don't care about like gra physics. There's no physics in this game as such. It's a lot about. Um, it's just transform movement, really. So, what we're going to do is, we're just going to create a floor for the moment. So, obviously, good old creating a cube for the floor. Um, oh, I just accidentally got rid of the inspector. Okay. So, um, this is our floor. We've got a size of, well, 10 by 1 by 10 for now. Now let's try and position the camera right and see. So, in the game, the kind of camera angle we're going for is, well, let's say, let me just pause the game on my phone. So, see, the only thing is, on the phone, it's a different shape. So we could actually just uh, go into game view, change it to, What's the mobile resolution? Um, what is like the average mobile resolution? Or like at least aspect ratio. Um, four by three, three by two. Eh. 
Is that right? That can't be right, can it? Um, I don't think that's right. What about 16 by... I guess that's right, it's just on its side, isn't it? So, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a way. Well, can I just make it 9 by 16? Like 900 by 1600. Is that right? So that looks too skewed. Okay, what I'll do is, what I'll do is, I'll just go for um, 300 by 400. All right, here we go. Here's our here's our game screen. Okay, um, let's just shrink that a bit. We don't need it now because it's yeah. <clears throat> so I can put the game view beside it. So we get that. Now let's get the camera. Control Shift F. All right. So how do we want this? Um, Control Shift. F. Damn, the resolution goes really bad there, doesn't it, with that? Um, sorry, I'm getting really annoyed by this. Um, we'll just go for 600 by 800. Just keep the... Increase the quality. Um, see, it's, it's very top-down. Let's just create this long. Um... Obviously, we can create wider as well, so 20. And we'll make a material for the grass. So material, oops. Material for grass. We will go for a, let's put it on first so we can see what it looks like. That's not very nice. I want it to be a bit darker. Maybe not shiny. Um, See, there's no sky. This is like completely a top-down game, really, isn't it? Um, this is actually such a weird camera angle. I'm not sure how they do it. Yeah, I should probably bring the inspector back. Um, I'm literally looking at my phone right now, trying to get the perspective lines right for this. Um, I, mean, I guess the easiest way, first of all, is to make it wide, re really wide. Go over here. Let's um, create a thing called grass and make it uh, same width, but like one unit long. And then if it's one unit long, save grass, then we can get another one called water, make a um, water material make that blue go put um, that on there water make it a prefab uh, let's create an original prefab yet yeah. okay so now when we actually do the level generation all right, I'll create another one called um, road actually so um, road and its material is going to be road uh, is this the road one All right. and this is the road one and it's going to be a like gray black like that maybe a bit less shiny all right so now what we can say is we can say like um so zero 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 and then we can put in a water for example whoops I will put a water and say zero zero zero. We want to go one on the um, x. Well, we could say minus one, and then let's say we want another one, another water, which is minus two. And you could go. Obviously, this is all going to be automated in code, but then you might say, all right, now we want a grass. So that's at minus four, and then you'll have. Um, oh, I didn't make. 
Huh, I didn't make a road prefab. What's that? Alright, duplicate grass, call it road. Give it the road thing. Save road as an original prefab. Um, and then put road to uh, minus five. And what for now, what I'll do is I'll just um, take this whole thing, duplicate it, and shift it along. That needs to be minus six, minus seven. Minus eight, minus nine. Yeah, I really, the first thing I should do is just get this done automatically in code so that we can, um, <laughs> I'd have to do this manually. All right, now I can get the kind of game view, right? So I think the main problem right now is that we just need more of these, don't we? We need this to go on for like ages. Let's, let's create the level generation first. So. Um, create an empty game object and we'll just call this um, terrain spawner um, this doesn't really need like nothing um, it doesn't need to be a manager that anything references because it's just gonna do its job it, it doesn't need to like care about anything else so terrain generator Okay, so oh, I called it spawner. I'll call it generator here, so I keep naming consistent. Let's open that up. I'll start putting stuff into folders in a second. Mm -hmm. Also, one thing is, yeah, when you start off making a project like this, if you don't um, limit yourself, you end up trying to do everything at once, and then uh, you get a bit overwhelmed. And that's what I'm doing right now. I should just get one thing done at once, and. I need to get this done right now, otherwise I won't get the camera thing right now, it'll be messed up. So, um, what we need is, we can now pretty much, yeah, let's just delete. We've got them all as prefab, so we can uh, delete them all. And we might as well just have the camera move the other way so we can increase X rather than decreasing it. There's, there's no point in decreasing it. So, um, with Terrain Spawner, we, we, need, we need to store, um, like, the place that is next to be... Um, for one to be spawned on. So we want to spawn them on like zero, 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 but then we want to change the X increase by one. So we'll store a um, private vector free for like, um, we'll store like current position or like, um, yeah, so current, um, just put like most, I don't even know, variable naming now. Um, yeah, we'll call it current position. And we'll, we'll just make sure when we uh, instantiate it that it's a, um, just at zero, 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 just, just to be sure. And then um, what we want to do is we want to have a start method in here. Um, and we'll say when we start, well, we also need to store the um, things to make. So we'll have um, serialized field private. Now, what that basically means is it's the same as doing public, but because we won't need to... Um, well, okay, I've mentioned this before in my other videos, but you should always use private when you can. And obviously you'll be like, well, if you're making it a private game object, how are you going to reference it? But serialized field makes it, so it's still private. You can't access it in other code, but it, um, you can set it in the inspector. So if you if you only ever need to set something in the inspector, but not reference it anywhere else, you can use serialized field private, and it's much better. So um, it's a game object, and we'll call it um, grass terrain. And we'll just duplicate this line two more. So if you want to duplicate a line, it's a uh, control D. So on the end of the line, control D makes another one. And we'll call it um, like water terrain. And we want to store um, road terrain, right? Now, to be honest, um, I was originally going to say we could just see. Okay. I've got a better way of doing this now. So obviously whenever you do something, you might want to get it working right away, but I've already thought of a better way. We can use scriptable objects and they store, uh, so we could have a list of, yeah, I've already got a better way I want to do this. Um, so let's get this working first and I'll switch it over to scriptable objects. So we have a random road thing. 
uh, or random terrain. And what we can say is, um, well, first of all, yeah, this should just be a list, shouldn't it, anyway? So it's private uh, game object. Um, yeah, private list of type game object. And we're going to call it um, terrains. I don't know. Why not? A equals new list of type game object. Okay. When we start, we want to um, instantiate. Well, um, let's just say terrains zero for now. Um, we should probably uh, actually do the instantiate now. So we're instantiating terrain zero. Um, and then what we should say is in the update, like um, when the player moves forwards, we want to uh, add it. We're, we're going to change this anyway. This is just for now. So we'll say um, if uh, what should we say? If input dot get key down key code dot. We'll do w for now. If uh, they press w, then we will instantiate a random one. So we'll say um, instantiate terrains uh, random dot range is the one that's not deprecated. Yeah. Random range, inclusive and inclusive. So we want to go between um, zero and terrains dot count minus one. That should work. Um, oh, and then close the square bracket. Um, oh, what have I done wrong? Ah, because it's, yeah, instantiate. Okay. Now, one thing I haven't done is say where to do it. So. Um, we'll say do that at current position. Um, oh, dot position, wait, dot transform. Wait, what? It's a vector three and it wants it. Okay. Why? Since when did it want it as a? V yeah, it wants it as a vector three. So current position, and then quaternion dot identity. There we go. I had to give the rotation as well, otherwise it didn't like it. Um, and then we can say uh, current position is equal to. We well, can say current position dot x plus plus. Um, because we just want to increment the x so that every time it'll use the new thing. We want to do that uh, here too. And we want to say current position quaternion dot identity. And uh, to be honest, as you probably know, one of a good thing is when you have some code in the like the exact same way somewhere else, you should just uh, make a method out of it. So one simple way to do this, if you had loads of code, is to right click and then on this uh, quick actions thing, you can press extract method, and then we'll call it uh, like spawn terrain apply. So we've got this function spawn terrain, and then we can just write it here as well, spawn terrain. Uh, just make sure it's indented properly. So right now, uh, when we start, we spawn one, and then whenever we press W, we spawn another one. Um, and let's test that and see why it doesn't work, because yeah, rotation. Yeah, I've already done that. Okay, good. <laughs> At least someone else was seeing what the problem was too. Okay, uh, that's compiled. So terrain generator. Let's just say it's a size of three, and we want grass, road, and water. Oh, water object. All right, let's just test if it works. You know, nothing ever works first time. Um, well, it does, except from I picked the wrong number by the looks of it because um, it's supposedly not minus one because it's uh, inclusive.
There we go. Okay, so just from pressing forwards now, we can actually um, spawn all these things now. And obviously, yeah, the camera's wrong. But let's say I can position it now. So... Like that. So, main camera control shift F. Um, maybe it needs to be zoomed out a bit more. Control shift F. And what I'll do is I'll just copy that component, stop playing, go back to the main camera, apply the values, and then um, we'll have it follow the player anyway. But the point is now when I press play, fingers crossed. Yeah, now we already want a certain amount of it to be done at the start. So what we can just say is um, we'll store a value in here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put this above it because it's in the inspector. That isn't, so I'll put that down. We want... Um, we want a value for like the max amount of um, max uh, what like max terrain count and we'll say when we start um, for each uh, for each int i in max terrain count spawn terrain. Um, oh wait, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't do a for each loop because it's not a list. <laughs> okay. Just put that in there. Um, so I need to actually implement this uh, max as well to say yeah does it have enough a graphic camera um, I don't feel like it does I could actually try with that in a second that's a good idea uh, yeah I'll see actually is it Oh, it's playing. Um, but what I need to do is I need to say um, on the terrain generator, max terrain, we'll start off with, uh, we'll say 20. We'll always have a 20 out at once. So what will happen is when we move forwards, it'll remove the ones behind us. So we start off with 20 and then we go. Um, so let's just mess with the camera quickly. Actually, yeah, it does have enough. Yeah, it surely does. Uh, let's just try and get that angle right. Oh, I think that's a good angle. Uh, let me just like match it up against my phone. Yeah, that's a good angle. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that right now. Uh, so, main camera control shift. But it zoomed out a bit too much. Um, I'll go with that. Um, copy, stop, main camera, paste. How's that looking now? All right, so obviously we need more than 20. Um, anyway, so we want to actually store a list of all the current ones out and then delete them when we add more. So now we can have a um, private list of type, um, yeah, game objects, and we'll say um, current terrain current terrains um, 
and we'll say whenever we spawn a terrain, um, we'll say, I'm well not let, I'm not doing JavaScript. Um, we'll say game object um, terrain is equal to that. And then we can say um, current terrains dot add terrain. So every time one is spawned, it gets added to this. And then what we'll do is whenever we um, add to the terrain thingy, we'll then say um, if terrain, if current terrains dot count is greater than max terrain count, we want to then say current terrains zero dot Oh wait, dot. Um, remove, yeah, dot remove, um, remove at index zero. Um, yeah, that should work. Well, actually, no, sorry, we don't want to just delete it. We also want to say, um, Wait, I'm just thinking, if we delete the game object rather than removing it from the list, then will it get removed from the list? It should, shouldn't it? Um, current terrains, zero, dot. That should work. We'll have a look. Um, what I could do is I can just put it in debug mode on the terrain generator and then just see that list. Oh, um, what did I not reference? I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking it might make it null because of the reference. Well, what we could do is we could literally just add the line afterwards saying that it's gone and then we delete it. Let's see, current terrains. Whoops. Game, ah, uh, gone off it now. Terrain generator. Yeah, it just, uh, it just does that. So, We'll say destroy the object and then um, current terrains dot remove at index zero. Um, so that should work. Let's have a look. Nice. Oh wait, I just realized the reason why the camera thing, I haven't, I've set my uh, scene view to ice, uh, uh, yeah, hmm. that's funny. But as you see, now when I press forward, it actually moves everything along, which I think is pretty nifty. And then, because you can actually, well, you can't really go backwards, can you? Wait, can you actually go backwards? I think you can, but you can't just go too far backwards. Yeah, if you go, start going backwards, you die, so... That shouldn't be a problem. We'll just make sure the player's always like, um, well, the camera never moves back. That's one thing. The camera only moves forwards. It follows the player, but only forwards. Um, but anyway, so that, that works. So let me just change the actual main camera to, uh, uh, let me turn off debug mode. Alright, I feel like I might have messed up the camera now because I've only just switched it. So let's let's just quickly fix the camera again. Alright, um Ooh, what's going on here? I need to like um Is that the kinda kinda angle we want? Um what's that? I just got a text, but it's not important. It's only my mobile people. Um, that'll do. Okay. Uh, main camera control shift F. Cough. 
happy. Sorry, I'm finally like kind of happy with the camera now. Um, all right, now that now that, yeah, now that I'm happy with the camera, we kind of want to um, switch up how we spawn stuff. So I'm gonna quickly make folders because that's always good. Um, folder uh, script. This is something you should always do right at the start anyway. Um, folder <coughs> materials bang 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 and we want folder terrain well we'll put prefabs for now okay so what I want to do is I want to create a scriptable object for a um particular terrain type so um what we'll say we'll say terrain data and one thing about scriptable objects as far as i'm aware is fields do have to be public for them to show up when you're setting them so to create a scriptable object you just put um create asset menu um file name is equal to um terrain data and then you can just put um, menu name is equal to uh, terrain data. I won't be having too many scriptable objects so I don't really need to think about organizing them too much. Uh, scriptable object. Okay, um, what's it going to store? Well, it's going to store a um, game object for um, its terrain and it'll store a public um, int max um, I don't know. It basically, this is how many in a row you can have of this. So, max. Um, one set. Max in. Um, what should I call it? That's if I even spelt succession right. Okay, so we know the kind of terrain it has, the max. Let me go back, look at the terrain generation. What do we need to know? Um, for now, that's all we need to know, but we can always add to that. So instead of a list of uh, terrains, we want to have a list of terrain data. Um, terrain datas. Wait, well, technically the plural of data is also data. Um, I think I should put S just for the sake of uh, it, you know, it'd look. Um, okay, so what we need to do when we spawn is we need to say we're going to instantiate terrain data. Okay, wait, I'm actually going to remake this part. Uh, let me just comment, comment it out for a second. Alright, so the way I'm going to remake this one is we're going to say... Let, let me just work for it. So, um, we need to know, we need to loop. We need to do some loops. So, um, let's pick a random number for which terrain to spawn, basically. So we'll say uh, int um, random dot range between zero and um, terrain data dot well, uh, count. So then what we can say is we want to we do want to instantiate again um, terrain data and then which terrain and we want to do that at the current position uh, with its rotation um, oh what did I do this time 
Ah, because I see terrain data, which terrain dot, and then terrain is the actual game object. So we're going to pick a random one from the list and spawn that. But we actually want to loop this. So um, we want to loop it. So we're going to say um, int uh, terrain in succession is equal to random dot range um, terrain data is which terrain dot max in succession and we'll do zero comma so what that's basically saying is this is deciding which one we're going to spawn and because we know which one we're going to spawn we can then see how many of those we're going to spawn in a row and then we can do a loop here so we can say um we do a for loop for i is less than terrain in succession. Do this game object terrain is equal to that. Um, so we're just going to loop doing the adding the terrain. And then whilst we're doing that, we're also going to say, we're going to do this code still, right? So we're going to say, um, So every time we create one in that terrain succession, we're going to um, add to it. And then if it's greater than the count, we're going to destroy the previous ones. Um, though one slight problem is now, you'll see this, we'll test it out, we'll test it out and then I'll show you. So. Now the only problem is when we um, when we start spawning them ahead, it's spawning them in chunks, so it's going to start remove. Yeah, it's not going to work exactly right now. Um, but we'll just create the script whole object. So we'll put um, folder scriptable objects um, train data. Oh, train data. So we'll create a new, and we've got it up here, terrain data. So grass uh, has the grass object. And let's say for grass, the max you can have is four. Um, why not? And then, or maybe we'll go for five. Then we'll say, uh, create a new terrain data road uses road. Um, also, yeah, they do need to be public, don't they, anyway, because we're going to be using them elsewhere. Um, so now we want the max in session for row. Let's go for four then. If we've got five for that, we've got four for this. And then why not? We'll make water be free. Um, train data, water free. Okay, and then um, now on the terrain generator, we just need to have a, um, let's just lock that for a second and put these in to the list. Um, so let's watch our problem now. The problem should be the amount of things spawning. So. For example, if I go to train generator, well, let's zoom out in the scene view. We can put that back into perspective now. So one problem is that sometimes when I'm creating them, it doesn't actually create them. Because what's happening is we are looping and creating a certain amount of them. Whilst each one we create, we're destroying ones at the start we need to only create new terrain when we move. So obviously this is just saying we move, we should try and spawn it, but we need to do a check first, basically saying, um, what, what should we actually check for? We should say, um, basically what I'm saying is we don't want to like press forward and then create like five at the end um, when we've actually not got enough behind us, basically. Okay, actually, we'll shift this around later because what what we can do is, we can have it um, check every time we move forwards how far it is till the end, and if then only uh, call this if there's a certain amount of um, room to the end. Because one thing for certain is when we try now, it should always spawn something when I try and move forwards, but I don't think it was. So let's see. So forwards, it didn't spawn anything. Then it moved. It moved. So it spawned two of them. Spawned one of them. Two of those, 
none of those. There's no errors. So, ah, because <laughs> for some weird reason, I'm trying to say we're going to pick between zero and the max. I want to pick between one and the max. Some, sometimes it's just coming out zero. Um, yeah, that's just me typo. Um, yeah, the problem is we are moving too fast sometimes because the back ones, yeah. Right, it, it works, we're just gonna change when we call that function later. Now let, let's create the character move, and that's, that's really what we want right now. So, let me to make sure that we can spawn the player on like zero, zero, zero or something. So, if I create an, a cube, uh, why do my windows keep going? Uh oh. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> why do I keep doing that? Let me just learn the um, control, oh, so it's like control one. No, it doesn't seem to be opening them. Oh well. Um, wait, where where have they gone? What? Wait, wait, sorry, that's scene view. Oh, because I was trying to spawn the scene view when I already had it. Okay, <laughs> let's try that again. Um, have I got the console? What's console? Control four five. Three, two, one. Damn, what's console? Control shift C. Okay, okay. Um <laughs> I really need to learn those. But anyway. What am I checking now? If I spawn a cube and put it at zero zero zero. Whoops. Where are we? Did I move them forwards? Okay, so the, m the closest one spawns at an x of 30. Oh, because right at the start it calls the function 30 times. Um, does it always spawn at 30? No, I can spawn at 34 because it's the random thing. Okay, um, so we kind of want it to be different when we um, start. So, um, what we'll do is we'll just say, uh, we'll take an a boolean um, is start, and we'll say true, false. Um, and at the start, all we want to do is, um, Yeah, spawn at the start. Hmm. See, this is causing problems now because of how I've done it. Okay. Um. <laughs> so. We're going to loop through how many in succession spawn those. And then this is the check to say if we're above the max, destroy it. Um, I guess one sloppy way of doing it for now is we can just say like if is start. Well, if it's not the start, we will be doing this thing here. Um, But when it is, we don't want to remove anything. Um, what we can do is, if it's not the start, if it is the start, um, after we spawn all those terrains, we can then say max terrain count plus equals No. Nah. 
So basically what I'm saying is, yeah, I know I set the um, max terrain count to be like 30, but I'm going to allow that to be flexible um, by a bit. So it actually changed it to 59, but then from now it'll always be 59. That works. Uh, that's a, yeah, th this is kind of like a sloppy way to fix it, but it, it does work. So now if I press play and spawn a cube at 000, zero, zero it should be at the start. Um, I should also put these into like a folder, um, to be honest. Like, let's make an empty game object for um, terrain. Um, and that's at zero, zero, zero. And then you can set a parent when you instantiate. So let me just try and remember how you set a parent when you instantiate. Um, well, I'll just cut this out and just um, can you set? Oh, well, actually, no. What I'll do is I'll just set parent. Um, <laughs> Simply just do a terrain dot set parent or train dot transform dot set parent to be um, terrain holder, and you can set parent to a uh, transform. So I want to just store a um, private transform terrain holder. Okay. Um, was that compiled? Did that compile? Oh, it did. Hopefully, this just neatens it up. There we go. So now we just don't instantiate forever. Uh, parent after quarter and in. Oh, um, can you? We'll see. Oh, you can. Thanks. Um, <laughs> might as well do that then. Um, terrain holder. Um, we could just go to that line. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do that's done. Next. Well, one thing I didn't actually check, which is what I was just wanting to check, but obviously all the train got in the way, is if I make a cube and put that at 0, 0, 0, saying that's our player for now. Yeah, so if we put him at a Y of 1. Okay, okay. So that's where the player spawns. For now, we'll just leave him there. We'll just put him there. Um, so, yeah, let's create a cube and make him player, so... Create a cube, player, and for now we'll just go prefabs. He's our player. Okay. Um, we'll leave him the same color. Doesn't matter. Now he needs a collider. We'll go for a trigger collider because he doesn't have gravity. He's just gonna have. Um, hmm. Yeah. So now we can just call this. Um, Play it. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, I think I can have a player script. I don't need like loads of player scripts because all the player does is move, right? There's no attacking or anything. They're just moving and dying. So I can just have a player script, surely. Uh, it's always good if you have a complex thing to like split. Oh. Uh oh. Cannot remove that because network lobby play. Oh. Did not mean to actually put those scripts on. So can I not create something called player? Or can I? New script, player. There we go. It just auto-filled to the um, networking one. <laughs> so scripts, player. So uh, this is where we do the players. Input. And we're going to... What else do we need on the player? We'll add a quick animator for hopping. Um, uh, animator, um, 
I'll just do it here for now. Animated controller, player, and we'll create two animations, uh, idle and hot for now. Um, so idle's the default, and we can go to hop, and we can go back. Um, we have a trigger for hopping, so I usually do it lowercase. Um, so from idle to hop, we do that when hop is true and we have no exit time. And we go back after exit time of one. And idle can loop and hop can't. Okay, so if I quickly just set up this, so um, animation idle. Um, the hop is very quick, so um, uh, I think what we actually need to do is we need to put the um, the object we're animating under this because it's just a visual hop. Yeah. So let me just create a an empty game object called player actually. Um, and call this player object. Because with this actually we can hop any object we put in to be honest. Because if we put in a new model we should be able to hop it. So put object under player. Um, let's delete that and then put that in as a not an expert with the new I uh, know I did a video on it but I'm still not an expert with the um... yeah okay there we go so uh, the player will have the player script um, it will have the box collider so this won't actually have the box collider on it um, and then this will have the animator on and the animator effects no sorry this won't have the animator on and this will have the player on uh, this will have the animator on with the player animator. Let me just apply all. All right. Um. So this just visually moves hopping. It doesn't actually like move. The box collider. Okay, I think that should work now. So idle. We want object dot transform position to literally just like stay how it is I guess and then for hop we'll say like um, we'll be back to where we are in half frame but um, at this point the objects y could be 0.5 so it's like hop. I feel like that should be. Uh, can we go down to twenty frames? Is that too too fast? Oh, I, f I think that's fine to be honest. We'll see. Um, so we've got those two animations done, and just for the sake of it, I'll push this down to twenty frames, so it's consistent. Um, so now in the player script, we can just try saying. Um, void update um, and we'll store a um, we'll store a <coughs> private animator controller runtime, no wait that's not it just an animator right yeah um, and then we'll say animator dot no wait, <laughs> if input dot get key down 
pico.w animator.set trigger hop hop um, so we don't want to actually move anywhere just yet we want to just make sure when we try and move forward we hop oh I didn't reference uh, well actually I, nah. Why am I doing that? I can just uh, keep it as a private animator and just say um, oops, animator so we can get the animator on the current game object. All right, uh, one problem is with the animator going to the hop, it has a delay because we want to be able to interrupt. Um, I always forget which one to press. All right, let me just test it <laughs> in play time. A bit, a run time would be a bit easier. You'll notice it waits until it breaks. So we want to say, um, Is it possibly due to transition time? You know, let me just tweak with this a second. Um, Okay, it works. I should probably have a um, thing for, let's think, because we don't want to be able to hop when we're already hopping. Um, so, I mean, what we can do is we can just say um, public void finish hop. Um, and we can just have a private ball is hopping and then um, we can say uh, is hopping is equal to false and here we can say uh, is hopping is equal to true and then if I press W uh, and not is hopping and then we just need to add an animation event so an animation event is a function that gets called during an animation so if we go to hop and we say you know go up down as soon as we finish here we can add this little thing here and if we go up here we can select a function called finish hop it's the only public um, function on this object with a script on this object anyway okay so now that we've got that hopping, we can try moving it. So when we move, we want to um, so I'll split this all into functions afterwards. Let's think. So we do the hop, and we want to move forwards. So before we even care about checking if we can move forwards, we're just gonna move forwards. So we can say. Um, What I'll do is I'll debug dot log um, transform dot position, and then I'll say this is just for my sake. I'll say if transform dot position dot, and then 
the Y doesn't ever matter. The Z doesn't matter. So we want to check if... Wait. No, it does, doesn't it? It's the Z we actually care about in this one. Yeah. Let's just zero this, but put a one on the Y. So, obviously we can hop left and right. So we want to, um, we can also hop forwards. Now, our X will always be a whole number. So, we basically want to say, if transform.position.z, um, now to check if it's, a uh, whole number. I mean, there's probably a nice function for it, but um, the way I would do it is you do a modulus. So if you say that modulus um, one, which basically means the remainder when you divide by one. So we want to divide it by one and then if it returns zero. So if that is equal to zero, um, we can then say debug.log um, on grid space because um, and then we'll just say why not transform dot move at transform dot position is equal to uh, what am I doing um, vector free dot move dot translate it's transform.translate, isn't it? I, ah, transform.translate. Um, we're going to make it like smoother, but for now we'll say transform.translate um, in the direction and distance of this. So we'll just say um, move vector free. We want to move one on the X and then none on the others, right? I've probably done something wrong there, but hey. All right, so as you see, it's saying um, on grid space. Uh, now, let's say I just took the um, player and shifted his Z by like a tiny bit. So it's, it's not, it doesn't move forwards now because there's, uh, we're not on a grid space. So that's the check I wanted to do first. Um, so that's good. We don't need to log that anymore. Um, So yeah, if we're on a grid space, just move forwards one when we press W. And then if we're not, we then, um, well, first of all, we'll do transform. Ooh, um, Trees move towards a lerp. Um, I think move towards is the best. So for now, we can just say transform dot position is equal to. We'll just move it. So we'll say transform dot position is equal to transform dot position plus um, new vector three uh, zero. I say one zero zero. But if um, we uh, are not on a grid space, we want to take. See, this is this is a bit of maths now. So we want to basically say if we're at, like a let's let's just show this in inspector. Um, if we are at minus one point one and we move forwards, we want to go to a z of zero. We want to like go to the rounded value of our um of the remainder no the rounded value of okay wait um let me just think how I'd do this so if if it's not a if it's not whole number we then we do know the place we want to go to so we can round it so um we can say Transform dot position dot z 
plus one. So that's just a value. Um, to move to. Um, so we want to round that value. So um, we have to use math. So we'll use math f dot round to the nearest integer. That's what we want. So we're going to round that value, and that is like what that's what we want our um, z to be when we move forwards. So we can just put um, int um, new z is equal to. Uh, I thought math f dot round return an integer. Ah. Uh, um, Can we put round to in. Oh, there we go. Um, so then we can say transform dot position is equal to transform dot position plus new vector free one comma zero comma new z. And a way to actually make this bit of code neater is to say. Um, If um, if it's not that, then do this. So I'll put does not equal zero. Um, then we can calculate what new z is. Um, so we'll just say uh, int new z is equal to zero. Um, so I just have to define it here. And then we'll say uh, transform dot position is equal to transform dot uh, transform dot position oops plus new vector free uh, one comma zero comma new z. So if, if it doesn't get changed then it's just gonna be zero anyway. Um, let's have a go. Let's just test this. All right, so um, we're not playing. <laughs> that might be why it's not working. So the players, two, three. Let's say I just tweak the Z by a bit. We're actually at point something now, and I go forward. Ah, well, <laughs> what I've done here is I've actually just... Um, rounded that to be the new z. That ain't what we want. Um, we want to move to take our current position, go forward on the x, and then the new z. So we actually don't want to move to the new z. Or we don't want to move by the new z. We want to move by the difference. So it's like okay. Um, let me think. So <laughs> this will be easy just to write down for a second. Um, and paint is the best way to write things down. Um, so um we're here and we're moving to here let's just uh say we're moving from here to here and we're fine because it's an integer so we're just going to move there that worked anyway then when we're offset we're saying we're moving from here to like um what well, this is like 1.1 so new z is going to be 1 because um, it rounds that value um, yeah the main problem I'm getting here is this is just the new value this isn't uh, sorry this is just the difference not the new value so we don't actually care about adding 1 here we just want to round 
the Z so we can get it back to a whole value. So this is just, um, this isn't the new Z, this is uh, like Z difference. Um, then if we have a Z difference, um, we'll say um, transform dot position dot z minus that um, so the z is a uh, float so This, why, why am I even making this an integer anyway? Because it's not going to be an integer. <laughs> um, so the z minus the difference. I'm having some little maths problems here. <laughs> I should probably have uh, like written this down a bit more, but we'll see. So we can hop forwards, and then if we're a bit offset... So what it's doing now is it's just um, increasing the offset every time. Um, all right, let me just think what these values are going to be. Um, the current Z position well, might be... Um, 1.1 1 .1. and the rounded one might be 1 surely it should be minus right because um, obviously if we do 1.1 1 .1, no we gotta do um, the rounded value minus transform.position.z Does that work in positive and negative? It should, shouldn't it? There we go. So if I'm at 1.5, it goes to 2. How about if I'm in a negative, so I'm at minus 2, it goes to minus 2. If I'm at 6, it, go, it stays at 6. If I'm at 5 point, it goes to 5, 3, goes to 3. Hey, it works. Okay, finally. <laughs> that is... Oh, I'm quite happy that works now. Um, yeah, so that's for getting back on the grid, basically, when we're coming off a log. But obviously, if we're not, then it should just work anyway. So, um, what else do we want to do? We want to be able to hop in the other direction. So, um... Um, we're gonna say if we do input dot get key down key code dot um, a for example um, and and I can't find the end key and not hopping do this well this whole uh, setting the animator thing I'll put into a function actually afterwards but animator dot set trigger ooh dot set trigger um, hop so we're gonna hop um, and we're gonna say is hopping is true so obviously all this can be put in a function um, now when we're moving up and down I don't think we care about the Z um, do we we don't really care about the Z um, because if we're ever on land, it'll be it'll be correct. If we're ever on road, it'll be correct. If we're on water, it might not be, but that won't be a problem because um, we'll just fall in the water basically. Um, so I feel like that's right to be honest. Um, let's 
let's go with that. Um, so all we want to do is just say transform dot position is equal to transform dot position plus new vector three. Um, on the x we don't want to go anywhere. On the um, yeah we don't go anywhere on the y, and then on the um, yeah, on the Z, we just want to move. If we wait, so wait, if we press A, it'll be plus one because um, let me just make sure. We increase the Z, yeah. Okay, and let me just uh, copy this again. Which obviously this is just temporary to make sure it all works, and then I'll make it nicer. We'll want to decrease on the Z. Um, What about jumping from log to log, Henry? Okay. Um, well, I guess if you're jumping log to log, you can only jump log to log. C can you jump sideways log to log? Or can you only go forwards and backwards? I don't think there's ever like two logs close enough to jump left to right. Um, but then again, right, there's a lily pads. So uh, I'll care about that in a bit. Um, oh, Prometer hope doesn't exist. Ah, someone probably noticed I uh, misspelled hop. <laughs> well, um, let's try that again. Okay, I think now that we've got the movement kind of working, we should then we should now fix the terrain bit. So, uh, well, actually, let's just pull this out. So all these do. Um, they all do a movement. Um, so I reckon what I should do is I should make a private function, private um, void for like a move character. And they'll take in a um, vector free um, like difference. So this is like the difference to move. Um, and what will the, all of them will do the animator and the hopping, right? So you don't need that in here anymore and you don't need that in here anymore. Um, so I can cut that down. And then we, they all set position, but the problem is this position is gonna be bloody blah, blah plus a new vector three. So it's gonna plus difference. Um, well, first of all, wait, let me just undo that because I wanna still have that in there. Um, So, um, transform dot position is equal to transform dot position plus difference, um, and all that means is here we just have to write um, move character minus one. Oh, no, um, zero comma zero comma minus one. It'll accept that. Um, and we can just write that here with a one uh, instead, and then that's obviously doing the calculation. Um, it was one zero, uh, one zero z difference. Just it, it doesn't matter that we've technically got this code running after this; it still all works the same. Um, so obviously I've refactored that and it should all work the same. So let's obviously test that to make sure. But yeah, I just want to fix the terrain stuff now. Um, good. Okay, so I reckon with the terrain, we don't want to handle the actual input for this, doing the terrain from this script. We want to handle it from the player moving um, because we have more control over it that way. So... Um, Rather than having any input checking for this, what we want to do is um, we want to we want to let me think. I'm going to do this. 
we might need some of these to be public now if we're going to be referencing them. Uh, so we don't need to know. We only need to know current position and isn't that it? Just current. Um, That's all we need to know. Um, so if I just say I want a uh, public terrain generator, well, might as well keep doing this to keep it um, best practice. So we have a terrain generator access now. So whenever we move the character. Um, should we wait till we've moved them? I mean, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, it kind of does make a slight difference. But we'll say terrain generator dot. Then, in here we've got the private void, so we have to make that a public function if we want to call it from here. So, um, spawn terrain false. So this is going to call it every time we actually move, rather than just when we press W, because obviously it would spawn it even if we were in the animation. So, and now. We only want it to do it in certain situations. So we want to be able to decide when we move the character. Um, well, technically, all right. one uh, rule of best practice is each code should have a single responsibility. So the move script shouldn't, r the play script shouldn't really calculate whether the terrain should be spawned. It should give the terrain generator the data that is needed to calculate it rather than doing it itself. So what does the... Um, what does this uh, script really need to know when we spawn train? Well, we obviously, as we said, we need to know if it's at the start. Um, we also need to know, I mean, I could just make a separate function, but I thought I'd just be you know, doing the same one. Um, we'll make a, um, we can just pass in the player's position, right? Um, so we can just say transform.position. Um, every time we move, we pass in its transform position, so that it knows where the player is, and then it can decide whether it should spawn a new one or not. So, we'll take in a uh, vector free player pause. All right. Um, ah, okay. Um. What we? Oh, how do you make an optional parameter again? I've done this before. Do you just say player pause is equal to? Uh, you press null by default. Um, new. Can you not declare? Can you not put a new vector free? Zero comma zero comma zero. Uh, oh no, it doesn't like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, wait, I'm an idiot. I could just pass it in here. Um, there you go. Um, so obviously that says well the players at the start anyway. Um, Whenever we want to spawn, before we actually do any spawning, so this should all be like decided before we do anything, we need to say, um, let's store a range. So we want a private int. Of like um, like distance um, from player uh, vector free isn't a nullable type. Yeah, I was going to put new vector free, but the problem is it didn't actually let you um, do that. So I just passed in a zero, which actually makes more sense because technically at the start the player is at zero zero zero. Um, so private in distance from player. 
Oh, I'll put like, is it max distance from player? Um, Technically, it's min distance from player, isn't it? Um, so we'll say if, and then we need to calculate something very quickly. We just need to say if, um, so if current terrain, no, if current position, um, and we can just check uh, one of its values. So we increase the x. So we say if its x value is, um, if it's x value minus player pause um, is less than min distance from player, uh, is one an inch uh, float and vector free, so it's player pause dot x. Um, all right, so let's think. If this is at like, if it's 10 along and the player's at zero, um, that's gonna, it's gonna be 10, 9, 8, 7, and then as soon as it's less than, then it should start doing it. Yeah, that's the work. That should work. Uh, I was just um, just thinking. If any of you, obviously, the benefit of people watching is if they, uh, you have to convert it back from vector free to vector free. Um, I feel like this works fine. I'm just thinking there there will be a better way to do it. <laughs> I can always go back and refactor it anyway. Uh, I'm just thinking. We just want to know the distance from the player. We could just store the player inside the terrain thingy, but because it only happens when the player moves, we might as well just pass it in from the player. Um, oh, we didn't do any spawning. Um, that's because I didn't set a min. So, terrain generator. I mean, I can just put 30 for now. It doesn't really matter. Um, I guess it do I'll tweak it when I need to, but let's see. All right, uh, where's the player at? So the player's at 16, so let's go for a little bit further. Yeah, the only problem is now, uh, it's not gonna start spawning for a little bit. Um, wait, I did it wrong, didn't I? I put, if it's less than it, do it. Um, Wait, I don't need a min distance player. I can just say max terrain. Um, wait, I've I've done something wrong here, slightly. It's just um, so the position minus. So that's just basically the distance from the end to the player. Um, we want to start spawning if that distance is less than a particular distance, right? Um, Let's just press play again. I want to read those values on the terrain generator because I feel like, um, so 30. How about if I put that as like 15? Because we don't want it to be the, that value, do we? Um, Why don't I use them? Um, <laughs> I could just use debug mode and make everything much easier. Um, wait, it's not telling me in here the. Uh, oh, because it's public where I put hide in an inspector. Well, let's let's not hide it in Inspector for now then. Let's just let me see the current. I'm just gonna do some logging. Um, 
So debug.log. Whoops. Debug.log. Uh, current position.x minus player pause.x. Because that code all gets run if this is less than whatever range I put in. So it's um. Well, there we go. Oh. Didn't I just say that? I, I just said that earlier, and you even said it, um, Jamie, that <laughs> forgetting to just, like, literally the only reason it wasn't working is because the player doesn't have reference to a terrain generator. Um, like, that's literally the reason it wasn't working. Why am I trying to debug all this stuff when I'm just being an idiot? Um, so, obviously, I don't want 30 to be the value, but let's say... Um, Train generator. If I set the max distance to be like 15, it'll. Oh, not 115. Uh, 15. It'll let me move until there's only 15 spaces in front, and then it'll start generating more. Which is really good. That's what we want. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's put it out of debug mode because it's confusing my brain. I hate seeing all these. Alright, so. Yeah, let's go for, for example, 15 for now. And then on the object, um, we can apply that now that we've set. I mean, oh, it doesn't like it because the terrain generator is not a prefab, so. How about now? Do you like that? That's odd. It's saying that. Hmm. Doesn't matter. It works. <laughs> uh, what I meant was that if you put question mark, the type makes it nullable. Oh, yeah, I've tried that before, and I mean, I've just messed with it and had problems, so I just didn't use it. Uh, I'll see. Um, oh. Yeah, I'd still have to... Um, put a default value. I'm just going to leave it how it is for now, but yeah, um, let's get rid of the debug. We don't need that anymore. And I can actually make this current position hidden again, because I don't want to change that. Um, okay, so now that's working. What do I need to do now? So I've got it, got it hopping around. Uh, it follows. I need camera movement. That's next. So we just want the camera to follow uh, the player, basically. I also should make the um, the value uh, like 50. Um, wait, uh, let me just try something. I've messed something up with uh, the spawning now because if yeah, the max thing is 50 when it's looping looping but because of the distance from player um, I could just quickly should I change this around to have two functions one for spawn terrain at start I don't think it's worth going back over it. I can just um, put that as like 15. That's what it was, wasn't it? The problem is it doesn't actually spawn 50 now. Um, 
It's because I set max terrain count when I don't need to do that anymore. Um, that shouldn't need to happen. We'll see if that breaks anything. Yeah, it stops getting rid of the old ones. Um, oh, no, what I can do is... I know it's obviously a bit messy. Yeah, I'll go back and do it. But um, I can say... For this... If it's um, less, do it. Oh, I can just put an or. I can just do. Um, do you reckon I can do an or? I can just say um, or it start because it should do it. Yeah, uh, it should be able to just spawn as much as it wants at the start, right? Um, that check could just. Um, well, let me make sure I do brackets right because I feel like. Um, Missing out brackets is uh, sometimes causation of problems. Um, you can never overdo brackets, really. Uh, I mean, you probably can, but... Okay, I've put it a big number. Um, I just need to get the numbers back right again. Hello? Oh, my computer just froze. <laughs> or something. Um, It's all about number tweaking, but yeah, basically I just don't need this number to be very big. Um, I can put it as like 10 and it should be fine. So long as the uh, camera moves with it. So I can tweak that number again when the camera moves properly. Let's, let's get the camera moving. So camera, follow, player. At some point soon, um, what's what time is it? It's 10 to 4 for me. So in 10 minutes, I'll give it a break and I'll start modeling some things just to add to the scene and then we'll go back to coding because it's always nice to just, you know, add a bit of pizzazz to it. So um, let's, what did I just do? I made the camera script. So Okay, um, one thing about the game is, let me just uh, get my phone again, just, just, just to be certain. There is a max to the side you can go, right? Kinda, there is There is sort of a max. Um, and the way they actually kind of put the max on is just by... Um, they have like trees and stuff at the side to stop you. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, what if I try hopping when there's... I'm just testing it on my phone. Okay, um, no, there, there just is a like hard set like max value on the sides. So I'll add that at some point, but for now we'll just let the player go freely. So uh, how this camera works is <clears throat> at the start, um, it sets its position to uh, the player and an upper bit or whatever. So we'll say, um, we need to store the players, uh, so, uh, serialist field, private game object player, um, and 
we can say um, transform.position is equal to player.transform.position plus um, plus offset, um, which we will say Now, um, this is the player. We've got the rotation done. So the offset really should be. Um, let's let's just um, let's just do that every frame for now, just so I can tweak and get it right. Um, It's just uh, clipping plane. One sec. That's odd. Um. Okay, um, then we can instead say uh, fetch free dot lerp um, from transform dot position to player dot transform dot position plus offset um, smoothness, and we can have um, and delete this. And we can just put a uh, serialized field private float smoothness. Oh, did I not close that? Um, one sec. Okay, uh, will I do um, more of these type of streams? Yeah, I'll do more of these type of streams. Um, it's currently, what, Wednesday, and I've got another seven days off. I'll probably try and do one more before I go back to school, and then I could do them at weekends if I'm free, basically. I'll keep doing them, yeah. I think Crossy Road was a bit of an ambitious one to start off with, because there's more than you think to it, uh, to do in a few hours. Like, for example, making, um, like, Cookie Clicker or, um, I don't know, Cut the Rope or something. That would be, like, <laughs> easier to do for this. But, hey, I'll do that in one of the upcoming ones. This this was a bit ambitious, but, hey, it's, it's working. Um, we're getting there. You know, the game's coming together. So... Let's play. Now, one problem is I just didn't set the offset, did I? Because I didn't play mode. Um, oh, yeah, I have to actually set a value, don't I? Um, can we just put that value to, like, minus 100 so that if I even go down it... Oh, off a of graphic mode, hello. Well, that's actually interesting. I like that kind of view actually, how it is now. Maybe we want to be a bit further out. Um, obviously on the Z we want to be on the player. Um, on the X. I think the only problem now is that because the road, I, I just think the player object needs to be smaller actually. Either that, because I think the roads are too small, the minimum road size. Um, I guess all I would need to do for that is actually just set a minimum size for the um, things that spawn. Also, oh, we're getting some uh, problems with the clipping plane.
Okay. The Chrome Dino game. Huh. Yeah, um, that would be interesting. Alright, I'm just messing with these settings. So, what, minus 20 seems to work. Um, I just need to spawn further ahead. Hmm. Wait, so the min distance from the player should be like... Alright, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll store the camera settings. Um, oh, I can just take a, a snipping tool of all this just so I remember. Um, Alright, so it's um, 0 0.1, 1, even 2.4, uh, minus 20. I don't actually use the orthographic camera much, so if any of you know like how to not make it look messed up, then uh, feel free. <laughs> how does that look? Yeah, we just need to spawn further ahead. Um, It's coming together. I'm just waiting to get to the point where uh, it actually starts spawning new ones. Here we are. I went for extreme numbers again, but hey, it works. And it actually, like, it's kind of getting somewhere now. Um, so, what I should do is. Again, just tweak this number down. Um, to like 25. All right. Uh, I said I would be modeling some stuff in a second, but one thing I want to do is I want to say uh, water. Uh, with water, I just want to um, scale on the why by like 0.7 and just apply that um let's just see how that goes obviously it looks like I'm just uh, in the water there but um that already looks a bit better anyway because it's off a graphic though um it's bit harder to like tell how big the river is I think it might be easier once we already once we have objects down to uh, go across so um, should I start well what I'll do is actually now I'll go to um grass and let's just um, just for the sake of it we'll say uh, on grass we have um, I don't know, a sphere. Wait, what, the, what the hell? Hmm. That's not what I wanted. Um, how about I create a sphere? Uh... And this is going to be like some kind of obstacle thing. Uh, so it gets in the way. And we'll put it at the Y of 1. And what I can do is I can uh, duplicate this and put one there. Just making sure that whenever I place stuff like this, it's always on a grid space. I could always add um, auto generation for this kind of stuff, like 
later anyway. Um, so 10. Now, and then let's just uh, create an empty capsule at 0, 0, 0. Give it a thingy of 1. Move it across. This can be our um, pretend tree. That doesn't look anything like a tree. And then all this, we'll put all of these inside the um, grass thing. Uh, and apply the prefab to the grass. Now, grass will have these objects. Obviously, it's going to look pretty stupid because they're not randomized. But um, what happens now, I guess? Yeah, because it's a trigger. Um, but that's fine for now. Um, but you get the idea. Um, so we're going to keep doing this. Yeah, I'm going to make um, some stuff in a minute. I said I'll do it at 4 o'clock for me, and it is 4 o'clock now. Um, yeah, let's do that then. Why not? Okay. Uh First of all, I want to make the cube uh, a little bit smaller, but I want it to like keep the um, same pivot, so how would I go about doing that? Hmm. Because currently it's centered to the player, so if I press play and then say play object, shrink it a bit, hmm, why can't I play? Oh, because every frame it's setting the. Uh, The Y. No, it's surely it's setting the Y of this. Um, how about if I paused it and moved it down to the ground? Uh, if the scale was something nice like 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, then the value for actually placing on the ground would be a nice number. So let's just copy component paste component values press play and then let's just see if that actually does anything. No, it hovers. Um, I mean the reason it hovers is actually because the um, Parent object. Oh, it's just because the animation, isn't it? Um, well, let's set the. Yeah, the box collider should be the whole thing. Um, the animation idle should be um, record minus 0 0.2 for the whole thing. And the hop should start there, end there, and this Y shouldn't go as extreme, it should be like, um, I also want to, um, reduce this again to like 15 frames. All right, I've just done some tweaking, so let's just see how that feels. Now we're on the ground. We're still on our grid spaces. We're still on the grid spaces. Um, one thing I also want to try. This is this is just um, an experiment. Let's let's add a rigid body, and it uses gravity. All right. Let's try. Okay, that actually, that's good. 
because <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. Oh, oh, that is not what we want. No. <laughs> See, that's why you don't just do it, everybody. But the the reason why I was on about that is because we want to know when we go into the water. Now, the rigid body thing will like glitching into things. Shouldn't be a problem because what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to check before I move whether I can move there. Um, the point is... See, obviously it's shifted off the grid space now. Um, and it's back on. Um, yeah, because it's a rigid body, it's never going to be exact now. Um, that's the only problem. I just want it to be... Um, I guess I could do a raycast down. Um, and if there's nothing immediately below the player, then we know we've gone on to... Um, We've gone on to water. That's that's a good way of doing it. I'll do a raycast with checking water when we add like death with water. Um, that would work. So, what's next? We just had some little model things. Why not? Um, so, uh, disable rotation of rigid body. I guess I could just add constraints. Can I? Uh, uh, maybe the constraints would actually fix that, and then it would be uh, easier to check. So just freeze the rotation completely. Because I can still change it in script when I'm rotating. Um, hmm. The only problem is because the collider is like the exact same size, it's not fitting through the gap. So um, I could just set the collider back to be the player. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know why I said I wouldn't do that. It still it makes sense to be. Um, that'll fix that, right? Um, I will enable, I'll put these constraints on outside of play mode in a second if I know it works. Let me just check when I, uh... alright, when I'm about to go into the water, what happens? And then when I'm about to go off it? That actually works really well. That's actually pretty cool. I'm actually liking how this is coming along already. Alright, nice. Let's uh, enable those rigid body constraints then. Um... Because then all I have to do is check when I collide. If I collide with water, I die, basically. Um, so let's quickly model some stuff. Now, there's this um, a software which I've never used. Well, I've used once, um, so I'm not great with it. But it's called, um, like, Magicka Voxel or something. You might have heard of it. It's like Blender, but you're limited to making, like, you know, voxel things with uh, cubes. But it's if you're doing it just for that, then it's better, in my opinion. Um, if I can find it, Magicka Voxel. So, for example, um, we can make like a simple. Where's it, where's it gone? Um, so, if I want to make like a voxel uh, tree, for example, let's just. Um, all right, I, I'm pretty new with this, so let's just. Uh, can we just delete? Can we start from fresh? Um, what's the best way to start from fresh? Or should I just go with this? Um, arrays everything um yeah what's the way to uh just erase everything um because this is like the, the messy way of doing it uh there'll be a way at the top to start a new project uh whoops um new project oh it just gives you a cube to start off with anyway fine um I'll do I'll work with that. So we want a brown, uh so paint. Alright, we got this brown. Uh go for a darker brown. Some more woody brown. That'll do. Um and we want to look at the tools. So we want to erase 
Um, we're making a tree. Let's just get rid of everything. There we go. <laughs> that was an easy way. So now we want to attach and we want to... For now we'll use boxes. So the bottom bit of the tree could be like... Um, can I turn on grid spaces? That'd be... I don't know. Um, Oh wait, we get grid spaces down here. So wait, it's between zero and forty. Wait, so zero and thirty-nine. Okay. That's the middle, right? Surely. Um. So let's say. Um. It doesn't have to be exact anyway. Um, I have, honestly have no idea where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> look up like a voxel tree. It needs a bigger base, that's one thing. Um, then I can cut into it with this. So I can be like, um, I can go to the line tool to erase. To make it look more like natural-ish. Um, I really don't do much voxel stuff like ever. So, I'm no good. Um, I'm just like painting it basically, like sculpting. Um, Alright, and then I can go back to uh, increasing the size of the base. Um, Just uh, oh no, right, that's the weird, weird looking uh, tree trunk. Uh, let's go get a green. There we go. We got a we got a tree. Um, why the hell not? I'll, I'll do for now. Um, so if I want to export as OBJ to um, where the hell I keep these projects? Uh, crossy road stream assets. Uh, tree O one. Let's just test this. So. Um, So if I just get rid of you, whoops, if I just delete capsule, um, just uh, scale that down a bit, um, a lot. Um, it should be zero, zero, zero. Um, point zero seven on all. Um, that appears to work. Uh,
let's just apply that to there and just see how that looks. Um, it looks really bad, but uh, <laughs> let's just. Um, Modeling isn't one of my strong points anyway, and I've just made a mess of this anyway. And it just needs more grass on it, I think, like more of the bush. Um, that's a bit excessive there. Let's just uh, overwrite that one. It'll do. So the only problem is uh, it needs to um, use up only one grid space. Um, Box Collider. Grass override apply. Now I've got stupid looking trees. Um, Like what I need to do is um, I need to now go to the uh, grass prefab and just um, delete these spheres. Um, what I can do is actually I can just duplicate a tree and just set it to like um, like minus zero point two. Um, and then delete that sphere, uh, duplicate it, and set it to 0 0.06. And then um, duplicate, duplicate it and set it to uh, 0 0.2. And then delete that sphere. So, for example, this is a um, a grass um, prefab. We'll save that because well, uh, I did it inside prefab mode. It's saved, and then um, what I can do is I can then duplicate duplicate this, save it as its own. So, like this is a grass. O one, and then I can say, well, this thing here is a uh, grass O two. Then I can get rid of grass O one. So this is a prefab of grass O two, um, and what I can do is I can just switch stuff around a bit. So I can say, uh, like this one's currently a. a oh wait. Um, 0 0.2, I can say, nah, this one's at 0 0.3. Um, I can say this one's at uh, 0 0.078. Right, see, these, uh, the one problem right now I'm having actually is just positioning the uh, trees on them. Because uh, Oh no, what's going on there? Um, this is a bit annoying. Um, when positioning these trees inside the cube, I 
like don't really want that to be how it's done. Um, oh, is it because I had it in local? No. Uh, I'm going to go inside these uh, things and just delete all these trees for now, actually. Um, because now that I've made them, I can easily just drag them in in the scene view and just uh, apply prefab. So, Grasso 1, Grasso 2. Might as well make a Grasso 3 while we're at it. Uh, just so we have three variations of grass. That's fine for now. Um, let's just put that one at the Oops, put that one at the top. All right, Grasso free, bang. So, let's make something else quickly. Um, should we make like a little bush or something? So I can just, uh, as far back as you can go. Um, I'm trying to like shrink it while making it into some kind of looking kind of bush while it's also not whatsoever at the same time. Let's just actually get rid of it completely. Um, Alright. Uh, I need to get better at this tool but hey. Um, attach. Um, so we can have like a kind of base for it again like so. Why not? This can be a this can be a stupid bush. Um, object uh, bush o one. For the sake of visuals, I don't really care right now. Um, not don't care too much. Um, so what I'm gonna do for the sake of placing stuff is I'm gonna say um, grass o one. We're gonna put tree in. Oh no, it's gonna be a bit big. Um, so this is going to be at zero zero zero, right? Zero zero zero, right at the center. And we don't actually want so like that's that's compared to the player, right? Um, so let's go back and put it zero zero now, and put it down to the ground so it's at 0 0.5. And um, then we can give it a grid space, so like minus minus three. Um, and you know, let's make another one and give it a grid space of um, six. Another one of grid space minus eight. Okay, and then we'll drag in a bush and scale that down tremendously. Um, go and like position that on the ground. Make it a bit smaller. Uh, oh yeah, it used to be point 0.5. And then, um, you know, go position that on a, like, two, for example. So we've got our, that's, that's that. So now we can say grass, gra uh, sorry, grass, tree, 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 and go and put that inside grass 01. Grass 01, apply. Done. All right, we're done with grass 01. Goodbye. Uh, well, actually, we might just push it to the side. Okay, now we'll do grass 02. Um... So I guess for that, what we can actually do is we can duplicate, put those inside um, Grasso 2, but then uh, push that back to uh, zero. 
and then we can just switch things around again. So we can say, I actually want a tree to be a, um, oh, well, actually, first we should pull them out. Okay, so we're going to say, that's a position um, eight. We've actually got a bush over here at position uh, minus five. We've got a tree over here at um, four. And then a tree down here at uh, minus nine. Uh, and we can put all those back inside Grasso 2 and Grasso 2 apply. And one last time for the other one. So we'll say take these, duplicate, put them at the bottom, uh, give them an x of zero, and move them around a bit. So let's uh, duplicate the bush. We'll put a bush over here. We'll delete a tree on this one. Uh, bush can be at uh, six, tree can be. Um, tree can be at 1.5, uh, bush can be minus 2, and this tree can be at minus 6. Alright, so there we've got some like variation, right? So I can put tree -tree 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 back in grasso free, apply grasso free, and now that I've got that, all I need to do is go to the scriptable object for um, train data and instead of having a game object it's going to have a um, list of game objects um, like possible train um, then a train generator it then um, dot possible terrain uh, random dot range between zero and uh, terrain datas uh, which terrain dot possible possible terrain dot length dot count obviously this is messy but um, There we go. All right, that's messy, but it should work. So if I quickly go back to the train data, um, yeah, the live stream will be watchable afterwards. Um, so possible terrain one um, for ter for road it'll just be road train data for uh, oh I've just realised um, I called water terrain data rather than water. Um, so that's water. And then for grass, um, we've made free. So now I just need to go to uh, grass and just uh, put. Um, you can actually just select all three and drag them onto there, and it puts them in the list for you. Um, get out of prefab mode. Let's press play and hope for the best. Oh. Well, that's that's handy. That, that that's uh, that's promising. So now we've actually got semi-random uh, generation. Um, obviously, I could add more things to the uh, to make it more interesting. But hey, um, now we can actually go across. So, oh, what do I need to add? Okay, I haven't got much long left on the live stream, so I'm not going to care about any more visuals. Uh, I'm just going to make it work. And if you want, I can make a follow-up video just finishing it off, like just not a live stream of video. Um, all I need now really is to be able to um, have a score, get hit and die, basically. Um, I'll do coins after. I'll do coins in a follow-up video because that's just niceness. So um, I don't care about that really. All right, so uh, canvas. Um, UI uh, canvas um, we want a panel uh, let's go to that so the panel could just at the top say um, text could just say a uh, score um, 
So it says uh, For now we'll just make it big in the top corner. So we want the text to be centered and best fit. And then um, we'll just shrink that a bit so it didn't overflow off the edge. Um, what should we do to control the score? For now we can just do it through the player. Yeah, I'll do a follow-up video making it nicer. Um, so in the update in the player, well, every time we move forwards, because at the moment we can't go backwards, so for now I'll just say forwards. Um, or should the score just be increasing as you go along? Because technically you are pushed for time. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks, Mickey. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, I'll just make it so the longer the player's alive, the more increases. It doesn't matter, it's just an arbitrary value. So we'll just say... Every frame, um, score, I'm going to have to add it on. I? Um, so using unity engine.ui, as I said, I will make this in a different script because obviously, um, what is it? Uh, this player script shouldn't be the one managing the UI, but for the sake of this score, just to finish it off before I need to go, um, I'll just say, um serious field private uh text score text so we can say uh score text dot text is equal to um uh private int um score and we can say um every frame score plus plus um, obviously that's that shouldn't really be done in the update because um, well we'll do that and we'll do a uh, private void because fixed update um, happens the right amount we want to do this uh, every frame so basically this would be a 60 a second in a 60 FPS game it'll still be a constant amount anyway so score text dot text is equal to um, score um, we'll see if that works but it should um, uh, is it loaded? it's loaded, ok um, score text let's just see if it actually does anything Yeah, um, it's a bit extreme and there's no, nothing killing me at the moment, nothing forcing me to move forwards. Um, yeah, I can still go inside stuff right now. Um, which, as I said, um, is the problem. We just need to add depth, basically. So one thing I'll add is on road. So let's go to road. Um, I'll make cars and then um, I'll do a follow-up video with rivers and stuff. So for the cars, we'll just create a um, car object or just something which moves. We'll create a um, prefabs. Let's create a cube. Alright, so this cube is going to be some kind of car. So it's not going to look like a car at all, we'll just make it like like this for now. We'll, we'll have it hover because there'll be wheels on it. Um, so this can just be called uh, car. That's a prefab. Um, cars. Where's their forward vector? Is that one? So Uh, minus 180 because um, each road has its own direction as far as I'm aware because obviously cars don't collide with each other so let's say this one spawns on this side right we'll just have a um, 
a road can have a car, uh, like vehicle spawner. I'm kind of just going to rush through this now to get this working. Um, and what I can do is I can make a um, vehicle script for the um, for this and all that says is um, on the start um, well we'll say um, sales field private um, float speed and then we'll say um, void update every frame um, I guess we'll say transform dot translate um, vector three dot forward times speed um, times um, time dot delta time. So that will work for that. And we'll set it to a low speed of. Well, actually, I don't know what low is, so we'll just go for um, point 0.1 for now, just so I don't make it fly off the screen. Um, I've got paint still open. Uh, and then the vehicle spawner on the road will have... Each vehicle spawner will have its own vehicle, so we'll just say... Um, uh, so let's field... Private vehicle... No, wait, no, no. Uh, private um, game object vehicle and we'll say um, void start um, start coroutine uh, spawn vehicle um, private i enumerator spawn vehicle um, and we'll say um, yield return New wait for seconds, and we'll wait um, for like well, well, let's just say for now every um, two seconds. I don't know. We'll say two. Um, so wait for two seconds, then we'll say um, instantiate um, vehicle at um, spawn pause uh, term identity, and we'll pass in show um, field private transform spawn pause okay um <laughs> so i'll have different roads that can spawn from different sides uh so currently, a road has a spawn position. So on the road, we'll create an empty game object, uh, which will be the spawn position. Which right now, I can just um, set it to be exactly where this car is. So actually, if I just take the cars, um, well, I can put that as one. Um, and that's how far along it is. Let's put minus 22. And it's going to go over there. So, um, yeah, let's put. Actually, no, that's relevant to the. Um, that's relative to this. So we can just put uh, minus zero point four, or um, doesn't really matter. So road. That's where we're spawning from the spawn pause. And the game object we're spawning is a car, so this one. Um, then the car has a speed, so we can. That's already yeah applied. Delete the car. Uh, this is applied. Delete the road. Let's test it. Um, I didn't assign something somewhere. Uh, 
on spawn vehicle. So prefabs road. Ah. Oh, I did make a car thing. Okay, try that again. Um, well, uh, first things first. That's 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 very slow. Um, <laughs> One thing about uh, Crossy Road is you'll notice vehicles move pretty quickly. Let's just, uh, I know I, I don't die right now, but the premise is still here. I got squished. Uh, I, mean, I would die in that case anyway. So we kind of want to um, have a um, um, Float. Uh, min. Well, we could make an integer, to be honest. Um, now nah, we'll make a float. Um, min. Uh, sep separation time. Um, max separation time. Uh, and we just say uh, random dot range between min separation time and max separation max separation time uh close bracket all right i think i've done everything there i just need to make it kill the player on touch as well i wait i need to i need to specify um The spawn time. Um, so it's the the road open prefab. Min separation time. So let's say there has to be at least um, three seconds between them spawning, and maybe a maximum of five seconds. And then uh, the actual car's speed I want to increase to like four. That's, yeah, this is a uh, gonna make it bit more randomized. Doo -ba -doo. It's safe, it's safe, it's safe. It's not safe. So now we've got cars, so we've got to actually wait. Um, we can just add lists of different vehicles to um, make. Uh, one thing is they should be destroyed at the end, and two, I need to actually... Um, Uh, while one, well, while true. Um, this is just an infinite loop, but I do want them to spawn infinitely or indefinitely or whatever. Um, that is what I want. So let's see. Obviously, you should never be able to spawn on um water anyway. Oh no. Uh. So yeah, on the roads now we get in vehicles spawning. Um, it's getting a bit more hectic, isn't it? Um, so now you can hop along. Obviously you wouldn't be able to sit in the water normally anyway. Um, you'll be dead to that. Let's just add the death thing. So um, on, a, on a vehicle uh, script. Um, private void on, uh, like, on, yeah, private void, okay, I've put the brackets in so it's not letting me autofill it, uh, private void on collision enter, um, if collision dot collider dot get component player, so if it's the player, um, does not equal null. Whoops. Does not equal null. So if the thing we hit is the player, then um, destroy collision dot collider or the collision dot game object. 
Yeah. So basically, if it hits the plate, now this is going to cause a problem with the camera script, so let's just quickly go to follow player, and then uh, we do just need to say uh, if player does not equal null. Otherwise, it will crash as soon as the player dies. <laughs> um, so it should just pause where it is, basically. Um, also, the Play the score should stop increasing actually when I die as well. So I'm going, I'm going. I need to add the logs. Um, actually, I could just add the logs in a second. Um, so should I, I'll try die now when I go into the next bit. Um, wait, is that a coincidence that it picked the same thing? Like sit. Wait, that's that's a coincidence, right? Because that grass in the yeah, that's that's a big coincidence. Um, bang, dead. Okay. And then the score stops increasing. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Um, what I'll do as well is I'll quickly while we're at it just um, take road and um, duplicate it to call this um, road 01 and then I'll take this and call it road 02 and save it as a separate prefab and then this um, this road 02 uh, take the spawn pause and um, Just take out the negative so it's on the other side, and then um, flip it by 180. Wait a second. 180. Huh? That's odd. Um, So wait, I put the spawn position on this time. This is just a, yeah, I guess the position's all that matters anyway. Um, then, I guess all I need to do is, um, hmm, let me look at the vehicle spawner again. So we just spawn it with its own rotation, so. We uh, on this road just want to rotate it around. Um, what's the rotation on um, the spawn pause at zero? So, so we say spawn pause dot position, right? Yeah. So we could say um, game object oh, game object vehicle well we can't redefine it um game object uh geo is, is that and then we can say uh, geo dot transform dot rotate um turning dot oh. and we want to rotate which axis uh, do you want to rotate on? The Y. So zero comma something comma zero. Um, on the Y we want to rotate by an spawn pause dot rotation. Ro rotation. No, uh, cannot convert that to float. Oh, dot y. Um, oh no. You angles. Ah, oh, I forgot you do this. Um, can I just um. Wait, can someone remember how to do this? <laughs> hmm. Oh, there we go. You said it, don't you? Um. V 
feel like that works. So if this spawn pauses, Y is actually um, 180. And we uh, apply that to row 2. And then we go to um, terrain data, road, add another one. And this was a uh, road 02. We can see if we now get uh, cars going the other way, hopefully. No, they're still they're, they're spawning on the other side now. They're just going the wrong way. Um, I guess each vehicle spawner could just have a. Um, I could just have a. Um, like, <laughs> this this is like a pre, not a cheaty way to do it, but we could just say, private ball is right side. Um, and then we'll just say um, if is well, is not is right side um, go dot rotate go dot transform dot rotate Um, new vector free zero comma one eighty comma zero. Is that a good cheaty way of doing it? Um, I would actually need to specify on it now. Um, that road O two has um that, and then a uh, road O one has that. Okay, I guess I'm coming to the end of how much I can do on the live stream, because, uh, well, let's just see if this works. Nice, it does. Okay, uh, let's just maximize this. So now, when we have roads, we can have vehicles going either way. Which I think is pretty cool. We're actually getting there. Oh, and I died. Okay. Um, there's only really two more things to do. Um... So what I should do is, um, on the vehicle, rather than having, um, if it's the player, kill it, um, I should cut that out and have a script um, for just destroying the player on touch and then anything that touches the player, and, you know, you can just have that on it. So create script, um, kill player on touch. I don't know, there's probably a better name for that. Um, Kill player on touch just has that. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go onto water, um, and we need to say uh, kill player on touch because you do that. Um, apply, and then we go to um, car and say you also kill player on touch and I've done that in the prefab mode so it's applied already so now I sh theoretically should die if I spawn on water or uh, die if I touch water um, so I'm going to just hop into the water and see if I die yeah I do so now right, the last thing I do before we end the live stream is want to add uh, ways to get over the water so in my opinion what we should do is we should have a spawn has it have a spawner rather than a vehicle spawner i don't know why i even made a vehicle spawner i can just call it um because yeah it just um just call it um moving object spawner it can just be generic like that it doesn't have to be a vehicle so i can just put game object just call it object okay you can't call object um spawn object and then just replace vehicle with spawn object um the rotation for logs don't really matter, I guess, so it's fine. Um, and all I need to do now is go to water and add a spawner. Uh, is it not saved? Oh, because uh, I need to rename this to 
moving object spawner. Boom. Um, I do need to go check quickly on the road. Um, that it's not lost reference. Yeah, it's lost reference to the car. Um, assets car. Apply road. Um, assets car. Apply. Okay. Um, and now if I just go to water. Oh, I've already got it in here. We want to add a moving object spawner. And I'll make a log in a second. Uh, spawn position. I will probably just do the same spawn. Well, actually, no, I won't. Um, what we'll do is we will quickly sort our folders. Uh, we'll put script, script, script inside script. I'll leave the animation out for now. Okay. Um, prefabs. Take the car. Duplicate it. And call it log. And put a log here. Um, logs um, well they're basically a vehicle they just don't kill and touch so in reality I should just remove that I could even rename the vehicle script to just moving object and then rename the script Moving, ob moving object. Um, so this has moving object, uh, has a speed of three, for example. Apply. And let's just give it a material. Um, for like log. Uh, and it's going to be a, a brown. And then, uh, turn that down. This is going to be in the water like this. So, uh, copy component on the water. We want to create a empty game object. Let's just set it to um, paste component values. Attach that to the water and call it spawn pause. The water's spawn pause is that. The water's spawn object is log, which if I, um, if I applied all that, um, log can delete now. Um, so that's log from assets. Um, min separation time. Uh, two and four. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's the right side for this one. Um, is that the left? Yeah, that's the left side. So that's not the right side. Uh, so I don't check that. And now I'll save this. Uh, save that. Let's spawn pauses there. The rotation doesn't matter um, and now if I go to water call it water 01 um, and apply well we'll call this uh, water 01 that's, that's applied okay and now I can uh, duplicate that call it water 02 give it its own um, prefab and with water 02 uh, we'll just take the spawn pause and we'll uh, put this to the negative of itself so it's over here and we'll just say it's the right side apply whoops apply and because it doesn't kill the player on well the water kills the player on touch but the log doesn't um, hey let's test it <laughs> who knows might work right, up, right off the bat. Um, I mean, it looks like it is. 
Oh, I already I died because I spawned on the water. <laughs> That's something I'll do next time. That's just a niceness feature. Well, not really. It's kind of important. <laughs> As you see, we can't really play if we spawn in the water. Um, so now I've got to wait for a log. So let's let's see how this works, or if it works. Um, I don't know what'll happen when I jump on the log. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't move with it because um, player. <laughs> oh, I never put the rig rigid body on. Wait a second. Ah, the player in the scene isn't actually like, it's not applied. Um. It should move when it lands on the um, thing because it's friction. Okay, at the moment it doesn't follow the log, you can just go on the log, which is okay for like this, but um, I want it to be able to move, so what's the easy way of doing that? I could do like stupid things like parenting it to the log. Um, I'm just thinking, why is it not already... Um, Let me just uh, remove those constraints and just check if that actually lets it go. Oh, spawned on the wall. Yeah, I, I okay, when I do my follow-up video, I will like fix little problems such as spawning on water. And also I will need to do something about destroying these um, logs and things whenever they get passed. But I mean, hey, we've done it. Um, this is basically the game, right? <laughs> you got your score, you got your cars, you got your, your logs. Obviously I need to add like lily pads and whatever, but um, no, that doesn't actually, um, alright, let me, uh, 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 let me pause, um, yeah, I need to also do something about spawning all these, we'll need an object pool or something, I'll make it more efficient <laughs> next time, um, so the player has a rigid body and a box collider, and it has gravity, it just doesn't seem to, like, wait, for, no, uh, is it because of friction? I'm trying to think, why would that, why would it not follow it? Um. Does anyone know? Um, why might that not follow? Because the player... Let's just go to the player script. It's not anything I'm doing in here, is it? No. It still acts with gravity, and then these logs... Um, is it because the logs don't have a rigid body? Like, if I put a rigid body, but then like, doesn't use gravity, will that break everything? Um, maybe they won't like being in water. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, we obviously don't want a rigid body on the log. Uh, I just thought maybe that would fix that problem. What I'll do quickly just to see is I'll make a, um, physics um, material called uh, like high friction. I'll just say dynamic friction 1-1 one, one. Um, and I'll say uh, like log um, has high friction and so does the player or something like that. I'll say that the player uses that material too. Maybe that'll make them actually like follow. No, no, 
<laughs> it definitely isn't the case. Um, it really just doesn't want to follow it. That's quite odd. Um, is it the player's constraints? Oh, um, that won't be it, will it? I already checked that. Uh, I just really want to get this bit done before uh, I end off the stream. Um, I didn't get to check it there because <laughs> I got killed. Oh no, a log had better spawn right now. Please, please. Log, anywhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> please, I just want to test something. All right, we got like plenty of safe space right now. <laughs> This is when everything starts getting to be Oh no. Hmm. That doesn't do it either. Oh, come on, someone watching, please. Why... Um... Why would it not follow it? <laughs> when the player is on the log. Surely just due to the physics engine it should. Um, like I could on the player. Um, I could just have a stoop um, uh, on trigger. <laughs> on trigger, wait on collision enter. I can say like if collision dot um, I don't know if collision dot collider dot name if collision dot collider get component ah. Uh, moving object does not equal null then I'll just say uh, if collision dot collider dot get component moving object uh, dot and then I'm moving I'm just gonna add to the moving object script uh, moving object um, and just have a um, A uh, public bool is um, is log. Um, why not? This is this is just a final mate test. It's something like setting the log as the parent. Yeah, um, that's what I'm doing now. Obviously, as you see, it's a bit delayed on stream. I'm just thinking that could cause movement problems with like position because it might be local position. I'll tweak that in a second. So if it's type is log. So if that is log, then transform.parent is equal to collision.collider um, dot transform. Um, then if I ever collide with something and it's not even a moving object anyway, then I can just say transform.parent is equal to null because he doesn't have a parent otherwise. So now, now I just need to say on the log. Um, on the log, you are a log. That's just a temporary thing. Let's see if it works. <laughs> I feel like this can cause some problems, but we'll see. Oh yeah, you can't go backwards, can you? Why did I add that as a thing? I need, no, I need to make it so you can go backwards, but, oh. Never mind, that actually works really well. That actually does work really well. Hey, well the game's now actually playable. 
Oh no. Okay. See. Um. Yeah. I need to freeze rotation on the cube. <laughs> uh, that was a bit. That was a bit odd. Did I not change those constraints? W wait a second. What? I have frozen the wrist. Hmm. Why did the player just rotate off that thing? If it's if the rotation is frozen, um. Let me just try this. I need to also stop being able to go into those things, but not right now. Um. Oh. I know there's some slight little things which can be tweaked, but it works. Obviously, like as soon as it comes off the log, it tries to get back on a grid space because when it's on the log, it's not on grid space. Um, yeah, how am I meant to get off this now? <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm on about. Why? Why is it rotating? Um, yeah, this is why I need to also add a. Um, you know what? So why does this log have a child of the player? Oh, because that's one it's attached to. Um, oh, that player just. Oh, uh, that'll be why. Because the one I have in the scene isn't following the prefab. Okay, done, done. The game's done for the live stream. <laughs> oh, I actually managed to hop before it registered me hitting the water. Wait, yeah, okay. So anyway, um, thanks to everyone who's been watching the live stream. I need to go have food now, and I hope you've enjoyed the watching the process of getting to this point. Um, Obviously, I did it all from scratch with no planning, and there's still some things I need to add, like uh, not being able to go into trees and bushes and stuff. But the fact the game's basically working now, you can go across these logs and then jump off and then boing, boing, get onto this one. Oh no, I'm on the road now, and... Oh. Well, that's interesting. Oh no, I did die. I think that that's because I think there's three roads there, it's just perspective, or, or for graphic mode. But anyway, I'll fix bugs next time. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I, when I've done this, I can actually just put it in the, um, like, put it on my channel and anyone can download it if they want to look at the source code. I'll make this uh, project available when I finish it after my next video. Um, or if you want, I could put it in the description of this video and then people can go and actually, like, tweak it themselves. But anyway, uh, thanks to people who've stayed through and watched. Thanks uh, especially to Jamie, who I think has been here the whole time. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to end it here because I definitely want to eat. So... Yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed it. Um, this video is going up anyway, so you can always go back and watch it, whatever. But yeah, it's actually been a good challenge because obviously <laughs> if I don't go in prepared, which was the point, I want to go in, you know, I've never made uh, Crossy Road before. I want to figure out how I make it as I go along and hopefully you guys can understand how I do that. And obviously making all that work with only like, um, you know, seven scripts, that's not too bad. I could probably have done it a bit differently or I could even make it better. I need to have an extra one for managing score and menu and everything, but... I'll do that in an upcoming video. So anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye.